Ruben De Silva, welcome to 13 Action News. Thank you for having me, John. It's so an honor to be here. Well, I'm glad you came. <laughs> tell me, tell me, uh, I'm puzzled about something. Mm -hmm. Tell me why you are running. You know this is a suicide mission. <laughs> I don't know if it's a suicide mission. You've been mission, told that se. before, I bet. Uh, every, I mean, from the get-go, everybody's like, hey, what are you doing? You're taking on one of the most powerful people in the state. You're running as an independent, which is, again, something that's a pretty, uh, putting you in a pretty much of a bind in many ways. Uh, but I think it's important uh, for people like myself who believe that they can add something to the conversation, they can contribute something to the uh, overall uh, environment here to participate. And uh, again, uh, I am bringing some competencies to the table, I believe, that do uh, make me a, a, a competitive candidate in many ways. As an independent, uh, one thing that I don't have is the actual structures of any political party backing. So we had to pretty much build this entire movement from the ground up by ourselves. But in that way, it's liberated us in many ways as well. To, uh, we can truly be representative of the people as opposed to having any sort of uh, outside influence, party influence, special interest influence over our, uh, our campaign. Well, you're running against an incumbent. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what, what is the difference between you and that incumbent? And explain to people why mm -hmm. you're running as an independent. Okay, I think first and foremost, uh, the reason why we need independence to take a greater uh, role in our politics today is because we truly can be, I think, those bridge builders. I know there's a word that political scientists are using these days to identify and uh, describe our political environment, and that's a hyper-partisanship. It's not just bipartisan or multi-partisan. It's, it's, it's to a point where they're so... Uh, uh, away from one another and so uh, actually having these visceral reactions to one another that it's just not productive at all. But talk about so, the, the specific person you're running against and why, mm -hmm. why you're Oh, different. I think I'm, I'm running against Dina Titus, the, uh, the incumbent. Uh, again, an individual who's, uh, who served prudently, who's been here for a long time, almost 30 years in, in politics now. But I think that the, uh, the environment has changed. And again, this is a representative form of government that we have. And I believe that one of the greatest contracts between myself and uh, all the other candidates who are running in this uh, race for District 1 is the fact that I believe that I am most representative. Why? You know, when you look at uh, myself, I grew up in this district. I, I'm an immigrant. I, uh, my family came from India when I was two years old. Uh, I grew up in District 1, still live in District 1, work in District 1. I'm a school teacher at Rancho High School. Uh, I'm uh, very much incorporated in, in that world. I'm a combat veteran of the United States Marine Corps, and I deal with a lot of the issues that the, that the community faces on a very intimate level. I'm not one or two or three steps away. Uh, I work as a school teacher. Education is a, is a pillar issue in our national politics today. I'm there at the front lines of this, of this, uh, this tumult at times. You know, I, I deal with those uh, oversized classrooms. I have 40 plus students, 48 in my second period world history class at Rancho. So I understand the stresses uh, that are placed on our public education system. As a veteran, just last year, I, I lost my, uh, my compensation. I'm a combat wounded veteran who received my uh, Purple Heart in Iraq. There's no reason why that should happen. And I had to go through a, 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 a pretty uh, arduous uh, uh, recourse to get, that, to get those benefits back at a very crucial moment in my life. I had just bought a house, and I was like, hey, look, I, I need this extra income coming in. It's, it's uh, menial, but it's, it, it mattered to me. So uh, again, uh, these are the issues that I'm talking about. I am an immigrant. You know, uh, tell, tell people what you do for a living. No, I'm a school teacher. I teach uh, world tell, history. Tell more, and, more about it, how you got into that. You said you were a school teacher. Mm -hmm. Uh, how you got into that profession, and I guess one, one reason I asked you to reiterate that mm -hmm. is that here you are a school teacher, you're obviously a smart guy, decorated vet, served, you, served uh, our country uh, with honor, mm -hmm. uh, more than honor, right? Uh, and yet you decide to run for Congress right, mm -hmm. right, right out of the gate. You know about the problems in education yeah. in this state. You have overcrowded classrooms you have to deal mm -hmm. with. Did you consider running for a local office, school board, the legislature that deals with that? Right away you jumped in and decided to run for yeah. Congress. So g give us your thought process. Yeah, I think first and foremost, again, a little bit about my background. Uh, you know, I did go to grad school, and my focus really was on global affairs, global matters, and I feel most confident in those arenas. I, I received a, a, a master's degree from the University of Pennsylvania in, in uh, global studies, and a, a second master's degree from Yale University in comparative religion and politics. And, my, and I studied under people like Ambassador Ryan Crocker, Tony Blair. And again, an Ivy League guy, <laughs> an Ivy League guy here in Nevada mm -hmm. running for Congress. Is in, by the way, I went to Cornell. I'm yes. sorry that you could only <laughs> attend two lesser Ivy League schools. I've been to Ithaca. I, 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 <laughs> I've been to Ithaca. But, but seriously, I mean, here you are. You're very well educated. Come, I mean, you, you got a purple heart. You, yes, you got sir. a purple heart mm -hmm. uh, in addition to a purple tie today. <laughs> and I guess what I'm just wondering is what are you doing here? I mean, you're not, you're obviously a very smart guy. You know, jumping in as an independent. Yeah into a heavily Democratic congressional district, mm -hmm. you have almost no chance to win. You and I yeah. both know that. So you're doing this for a reason. I, What's I, the reason? I think it's important. First and foremost, I, I, did, I do think there is an, it's, it's an uphill battle, but there's always a shot. 
And uh, again, I, I think that it's important for people like me who feel passionate, who are, who are doing this from conviction as opposed to any sort of political gain. I don't really have anything to, uh, to gain from a uh, or, or Clearly you don't. One of the run. reasons I did this interview is because of, uh, of what your pedigree is, mm -hmm. and I'm really fascinated why a guy like you who could obviously, you have the potential to be a great elected official, why you would die down into this quicksand. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's important. You know, I'm a social studies teacher, a history teacher. We tell our students, look, if you believe that you can make a difference, jump in feet first. Don't be scared. Don't, uh, don't uh, uh, wait for people, wait for your moment. Uh, you know, I really believe that this is, a, this is a crucial moment in American history. You see this uh, divided nation. This is a, a, a nation that is bitterly divided. I mean, you, you of all people know this, John, uh, witnessing uh, the history that's taking place in front of us. You have two candidates who've divided this country uh, like no, no, no other. And uh, it's important for people like myself, for people who believe that they can maybe serve as a bridge, you know, to, to involve themselves. I know it's a scary world, and it has been. You know, I, I, I filed for our office back in March, and it's, uh, it's been crazy, you know. Uh, I've had uh, you know, people who I thought would support me, not support me, and people who had no idea they would ever get behind me, get behind me. And uh, it's a scary world, but it's important, I think, uh, for people to not be afraid of getting involved in politics, and even for running, even, even, uh, for, running for office. To tell, tell people who are watching this, since mm -hmm. you are a relative unknown, I think we both agree mm -hmm. uh, on that, what do you stand for? Uh, what makes you different than Dina Titus? Mm -hmm. Why, what would you do differently than Dina Titus? I mean, talk about some of the major issues. Do you, do you support Obamacare? Mm -hmm. Do you support immigration reform? Mm -hmm. Talk about those, those issues and how you might be different than Dina Titus. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, these, these are issues that have uh, affected me uh, intimately. You know, first and foremost, I'm an, I am a proponent for universal health care. I think that we should orient ourselves first and foremost uh, to a system, uh, a national system. Uh, where single we, payer? Single payer system. Uh, where we, or maybe, maybe a, a combination where we can have a relationship between state and the federal government and, and create a, a movement forward. But I, I, my real uh, foundation here is, uh, is my belief that uh, human uh, health is a human right. And again, to see a, a country as great as the United States of America have to uh, deal with the fact that we have people who are uninsured you know, who have uh, difficulty accessing decent health care even, that t it just doesn't sit right with me. And again, I'm, I'm not backed in any sort of way by, uh, by health care advocates, nonprofits, or working for or against uh, health care reform. This is just uh, me speaking as an independent uh, American now who's participating in this race. So I am an advocate for that. I think that we should orient ourselves in a, in, a, in, a, in a stronger way in that direction. Well, isn't that very similar to Dina Titus's position? I think uh, I'm a little bit more independent and more liberated to, to do that. I know uh, that Dina Titus is uh, constrained in many ways by the political realities uh, that dictate her. She's, uh, she's a member of a political party who she's going to have to work with. Uh, and if, if her views are not in line with those views, it's going to be difficult for her to move out of that. I have no such restraints. I can actually truly serve as a voice for the people. Have you ever been a member of a political party? I uh, was uh, a Democrat, you know, uh, back in the day. But uh, over time, I felt that the... You uh, say back in the day. You, <laughs> haven't, you haven't been around that many days. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm only, I'm only 31 years <laughs> right, old. Exactly. I know I'm the youngest congressional <laughs> candidate in Nevada, one of the youngest in the country. Right. So, so, but, so, so you were a Democrat mm -hmm. when you got out of school? Uh, in, during college. During college. Yeah. And then I, was very much, I was very much uh, caught up in the, uh, in the Obama campaign in 2008. So, so wh I, why, did you, why did you leave the Democratic Party? What I've, made you leave? I felt, again, that, that this is, again, a, uh, an environment that's bitterly partisan. Well, and when I did this happen, by the way? Uh, I, I want to say uh, maybe like 2009, 10, you know, seeing this So very reaction. soon afterwards. Yeah, the reaction against uh, uh, President Obama from, uh, from all sides. Right. And it just, it just didn't sit well to me to be a member of a party, per se. I, I know it does bring cert, uh, certain advantages for people who want to run for office. And that's something that I have uh, thought about. But uh, on the same token, though, it, it, I, I think that we need to be a representative of, of, of who we are and, and the people around us, the communities around us, especially for those of us who want to seek office. Uh, when you become aligned in a, in, in a calcified system uh, to a certain political party, that can cause problems. And I think it's one of the fundamental issues in uh, seeing any, any sort of progress in our nation's capital today. It's a, and you, you notice of all people, it's a calcified system, it's intransigent, it's not going anywhere. I think the political parties have a lot to do with it. Well, what about, the, I mean, obviously there's two ways, ways to fix a broken mm -hmm. system. One is to try to fix it from the inside, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And the other is to try to fix it from the outside. Yeah. You've chosen the latter route. And as I think, by the way, mm -hmm. a lot of young people think yeah. both of the parties have left us. Mm -hmm. We need to find a, 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 a third way. I mean, obviously, yeah. again, you're a very smart guy. Uh, uh, you must have thought that part of it yeah. through, no? I did. You know, I, I, there was, there's some interesting data, and I'm pretty sure you're familiar with this as well, uh, that millennials, to my generation, uh, we are very open to the idea of having a, a third party or having a, a nonpartisan uh, run for office. And I think this is because of the environment we grew up in. Again, we came of age, uh, many of us, uh, during uh, 
the, the 2000s. That, that, that decade started off with 9-11. Uh, and then we uh, fought a, a war in Iraq and Afghanistan, a war that my generation, for the most part, was under. We, we were the boots on the ground. I was one of those guys and gals. And uh, again, there was just this reaction. Really, at first, I remember George Bush and how there was this visceral reaction from Democrats and the folks on the left against uh, our, our, our pe president back then. And it's been the exact same uh, reaction that we're seeing for President Obama, this uh, visceral reaction, this, this, uh, this hatred even in many ways. And, and again, that doesn't sit right, I think, with many uh, of, of my generation. The fact that, I, and I do believe that the, the, that the political parties, the, the influence that special interest groups are having in our politics today, I think is also a, a very crucial element here. And again, uh, my generation, I believe, hopefully, you know, we're just, we're just coming of age now, can be the generation that transcends that. And, uh, and one way of doing so is by disassociating yourselves with that, with that hyper-partisan rhetoric. It's going to take a long time, right? I mm -hmm. mean, you also know that... Uh, but it starts, it starts small. you got to start small, right? Some people yeah, have to be willing to, uh, to challenge that status quo. A challenge, so, someone has to do it, right? Mm -hmm. So you've, you've, you've nominated yourself, so to maybe, speak. Maybe I was the one here. I know well, I've done something uh, pretty uh, different. And, but, and well, you knew that in a good way. You knew that going in. So, so let me just get your, because I mentioned it earlier, and I, mm -hmm. since, since you talked about immigration earlier and where, where, where your parents came from, mm -hmm. uh, how do you feel about immigration reform, which is a mm -hmm. big issue yeah, yeah. in almost all the major federal races? Yeah, you know, you know I, I was not going to really talk about it in this, in this campaign, but, you know, just the, the question has been asked. I'm not my, giving my you a mom's going to be really upset. I'm not giving you a choice. Yeah, my mom's really going to be upset at this because she said, you know, stay away from this. But, uh, Why did she tell you to stay away? The from? fact of the matter is that you know I was undocumented in this country for many years, you know, uh, uh, and I, and, I, and I know that feeling to, to uh, being in the shadows, constantly worried about you know being deported. Were your parents a, undocumented when they came uh, here? My dad was a beneficiary of the Simpson Mazzoli reforms, uh, the uh, Reagan reforms, right? And uh, my mother was uh, somebody. That's the '86 was, immigration yes, reform. In yes. case people don't know, yes. go on. And uh, my mother, myself, and my younger brother, uh, we were undocumented in this country for quite a while. Uh, my other two siblings, my younger siblings, were born here, so they were good. And it took, uh, it took years, decades, really, to navigate this, this, uh, this situation. And uh, my, uh, I finally received my citizenship after I was wounded in the war. I mean, I was a Marine, served for many years, petitioned for citizenship, never got it, uh, until I finally made that claim, look, I took a bullet for this country. I love this country. You see, I've proven that the fact that I'm capable of laying my life down, and I'll do it again if, I, if, if need to. Uh, I, need, I, I just want to be a citizen. I want to, I want to vote. I want to be able to uh, also pick my president just as we're fighting for those people so in think Iraq. Think about that for a second. I want people to wa uh, watching this to really understand what you just said. Mm -hmm. You're undocumented in this country, but mm -hmm. you go into the Marines. Mm -hmm. They know you're undocumented, do they? Know? No, at that time I had received a, uh, oh, a, a work permit and a green card so at that you, time. So you had a, gr so you had a green card, mm -hmm. you get into the Marines. You wanted to be a citizen, mm -hmm. and you couldn't become a citizen, yet you were serving your country. Yeah. There's something wrong with that system, it's isn't a, there? It is a tr there's a huge problems with that. You know, uh, if, if you look at the idea of naturalization in the first place, again, I'm, this is the history major in me now, the history buff. Uh, you know, you look at uh, the Persians, you know, who built this great empire, you know, and then they understood that in order to maintain such a multi-ethnic, multilingual, multi-religious society, you have to find a way of incorporating people into this uh, system. And uh, they came up with this notion called naturalization. So you didn't have to be a Persian, or you didn't have to be somebody who was initially part of that, that group, but you could be naturalized and right. gain all the benefits and become a, a fully incorporated member of society. And in this way, you invested in the future of that, uh, of that endeavor. So uh, I think uh, that naturalization, having a pathway to citizenship, uh, is, is absolutely crucial in, in any sort of uh, You're really a creation. Democrat, aren't you? <laughs> Come on, tell the truth. I, I, You're I would, really a Democrat. I would, I would argue that uh, in the end, uh, mm -hmm. I have certain ideas that may put me in line more uh, on the uh, American uh, progressive, uh, you know, progressive wing, uh, the progressive side, I should say. But uh, you know, I, I see myself in the end as just an individual who wants to get things done and who wants to work to, to make this country a better place. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I really do admire what, what you're doing. And Thank you. That means a lot coming from you, John. And even Thank if so this much. doesn't work out, and you and I both know it's, it's, a, it's a huge lift mm -hmm. uh, to, for you. Uh, we have not seen the last of you. <laughs> uh, I have not seen the last of you. And I really appreciate your willingness no, uh, to come on and talk no, about it. Thank you so much. Luck this is really an honor. I grew up watching you on TV, and this is Don't make a me huge feel old. deal. Don't make me feel old. <laughs> it wasn't that long ago <laughs> okay. now. Come on. Ruben Silva, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, John. All right. Thank you.